I'm just going to talk about a couple of our core technologies and, and kind of how they work so you all can hopefully understand them and utilize them because bottom line is they'll make your jobs a lot easier. So this isn't at all about selling you guys some stuff, to be honest. I don't care. It's not my job to sell. I'm just here to kind of talk about how these technologies can benefit you out in the field and make you all more successful. There's two things that natural chemistry does very well. That's enzymes and phosphate removal. Those are our patented technologies. That's what put us on the map. That's what makes our line the number one specialty line in the industry. So I will talk about these two things. Um, I'm going to start with enzymes. There's two different types of enzymes out there in the world. There's commercially manufactured ones that break down fats and oils, and then there's ours. Um, you can use other people's products and it will probably benefit you some, but it's only going to break down fats and oils. They only break down one or two things. Ours is a broad spectrum enzyme. All right? You probably know it is pool perfect, but it's not just one product, it's a whole technology. But it breaks down over 3,000 different types of organic contaminants. So we basically have this incredibly broad grouping of enzymes in that bottle that will break down any type of organic contaminant that gets introduced to a pool or a spa, and that's important. We'll go over why in just a few minutes. Um, this is what our patent says. You don't need to never know this, but bottom line, it's a bunch of different powerful botanical extracts. That just means this stuff is all natural. You can drink it. I don't recommend it. It tastes terrible, but it's kind of nice to deal with chemicals that aren't going to hurt you. You know what I mean? You don't have to be... Uh, Careful if you spill it on yourself, you can throw it on the, on the customer's dog, it's not going to hurt anything at all. So, you know, we deal with a lot of harsh stuff every day and it's nice to have something that's non-toxic in your hand. So just so you know what an enzyme actually is, and remember we have 3,000 different types of these right here in that bottle. This is an enzyme. This is a protein molecule. It's got a little nucleus here, kind of like a little center. And then what these enzymes do is they have a bunch of little tentacles essentially. They kind of look like a like an octopus with hundreds of legs, but these tentacles actually will seek out something they're attracted to, grab a hold of it, and rip that thing apart. They actually speed up the biodegradation process by hundreds of thousands of times, and they turn that organic contaminant, the thing they're attracted to, back into water and air. That's how enzymes work. Pretty simple concept. They have a certain charge. This one type of enzyme is going to find one thing specifically that it likes to break apart and do it very well. That is the important thing, and that's why we chose to develop a broad-spectrum enzyme, because every enzyme is slightly different. There's an enzyme that's going to be attracted to a certain type of organic. Say this red one right here, which is one of the 3,000 plus in our bottle, is going to find pollen. That's what it breaks apart. You put it in the water, it goes and finds pollen that's been introduced to the body water, and it breaks it apart. Now this enzyme right here is designed to break down sweat. Okay, if it comes in contact with a pollen molecule, it just goes on and it finds that sweat. So every different type of enzyme is going to break down one or two things. That's why ours is so uh, effective. We've got over 3,000 different ones of these things working. Um, again, this is just to, to illustrate what exactly enzymes do. This is the enzyme. This is something bad. The enzyme finds what it likes turns it back into water and air, and then releases it. That's all it does. Speeds up the biodegradation process. That is important. You don't realize, but organic contamination in pools and spas really is pool enemy number one. It's what you guys fight on a daily basis out in the field. <coughs> um, these are communal baths. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your bathing habits are. If you jump into a pool or a spa, you're going to get out of that pool or spa cleaner than when you went in. That's to say you're going to leave a little something something behind for the person that gets in there after you. It's just a fact, right? We're animals, we, we, we leave stuff behind. So we put this theory of ours to the test about four years ago, and we were able to determine not only exactly how much stuff, organic contaminants, we leave behind, but we actually had four adult bathers on several different occasions get into a body of water and follow their normal swimming habits. So we wanted to find out what they were leaving behind and how much. This is the amount after one 45 minute session that we were able to extract from four adult bathers through microfiltration. Um, that's a lot of organic waste. What we were able to determine is that the average adult bather that we found exuded about 16 ounces every 45 minutes of waste into a pool. Um, the industry actually has higher numbers than that. Uh, there's been some organizations that, that have done their own research and, and that number's higher, but we found 16 ounces every 45 minutes. That's a pint of beer that you're dumping into a pool every 45 minutes. 
Um, and you know, that can build up. You know, I know a lot of, especially in commercial pools, but even backyard pools, you get five, six, seven people in there, we're talking about a gallon of waste in an hour, you know? It's just a lot of stuff, and, and that can cause problems. This is an actual pool in China. Um, this is just the area where it's a holding area where you go into and wait until they open this gate right here and then let you into the main body of water. That's how many people are in this pool. Imagine the organic loading that's going on in there. I mean, 16 ounces every 45 minutes. That's a lot of waste. So enzymes break that stuff down. This is a great example, too, because warmer the water, the more soluble things are, the faster we exude this waste. Hot tubs are small bodies of water. They get fouled up pretty darn quick. We all know that. This is a perfect example of just this organic contamination. This guy's picking his nose. This chick's smoking a cigarette. Falling, the ashes are falling right into the water. I'm sure that's organic waste. They're drinking. I see some shot glasses over there, so their inhibitions are uh, out, the, out the door. This guy's farmer blowing right in the water. Now, the ones that really scare me, though, this girl's telling us she just went number one. What do you think old boy here is saying? Right? <laughs> it's just, you know, if you had this spa on your account, on your route, or this is your customer, you know that water is going to look pretty miserable the next day. It's going to look lousy. There's a lot of waste going on in there. So it's a great picture to illustrate exactly how fast these organics can contaminate your body water. All right, so back to that disgusting two-liter bottle of, of film and filth that we uh, were able to extrapolate from our, uh, our test subjects. We had it broken down and analyzed, and these are some very common organic contaminants. Suntan lotion. If you actually read the back, this doesn't surprise anybody, but people swim, suntan lotion's good, you put it on, you don't get burnt, blah, blah, blah. But if you actually read the instructions on the back of a suntan lotion package, it says to apply about 45 minutes before you get in the water. Nobody does that. Nobody does. It's by design. It strips off. You have to reapply the suntan lotion. They do that to sell more product. I get it. You know, whatever. But this is not water soluble. So as it strips off, it stays in solution. It stays in the water. It creates a slick. Suntan lotion was a big part of the uh, organic contaminant that we were able to extrapolate or take out from that study we did. Um, sweat. There was quite a lot of sweat. We were able to uh, separate some sweat out of that sample. That makes sense. We swim when it's hot. Sweat's an ammonia byproduct. Um, it's, it's a really big contributor to chlorine demand, so that, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, also, body oils. We found quite a lot of body oil uh, in there, which of course is, a, is a, an organic contaminant. But we found out that when you bathe, especially in any kind of uh, water that's, that's above 75 degrees, your body opens up its pores, your skin does, and it exudes toxins through oil release. So, kind of surprising the amount of body oils that we found. It's pretty gross, but it happens every time someone jumps into a pool. So, again, an organic contaminant. Makeup, evidently, the two gals that we were having do the study wore quite a bit of makeup. I didn't see them personally, so I can't vouch for that, but there was a lot of makeup left behind in the body of water. Um, lipsticks, mascaras are hydrogenated oil based. Those will not break down in water at all. I mean, they'll just suck up chlorine, so there wasn't a, a good amount of makeup. Again, this is something that organics or uh, that enzymes would break down. Also, hair product. I have a little in my hair, so if I jumped in your pool, I'd leave it behind, but we found some of that in that uh, sample as well. And then, of course, urine. This didn't surprise me at all. Um, we actually uh, we did this, we, we found this report. Um, with over a thousand adult swimmers that were polled in Arizona and they were simply asked do you pee in pools when you swim yes or no? Anyone want to guess what the percentage of people who answered yes was? 65 percent. I heard 80 pretty much off the jump. It was 84. Which basically is telling me about 15 percent of them are lying because I think about everybody. <laughs> um, we, uh, <laughs> Jamie was there. We were in Cabo, Mexico about what a year and a half ago? Yeah. Um, for a, believe it or not, a sales meeting. We, it was our 25th anniversary, so our company was nice enough to, to take us down there for a working sales meeting. Yeah, but we make up for it by going to Syracuse other years. And that is true. Places like yeah, that. we have to go to Syracuse the other years. But so we were down in Cabo, and you know, it was a bunch of pool people hanging out by the pool. And this is a resort with a swim up bar. There was these seven or eight big old guys just hanging up at this swim up bar, and we counted, I think, seven or eight rounds of beers that were drank, and not one of them got out of the pool. <laughs> so, of course, we were doing our own drinking outside the pool, 
and we dared one of our new guys to go actually swim underwater right through all these dudes and then go order some beers at this bar, and he did. And he came back just kind of shaking his head, and he's like, the water was noticeably warmer over there. <laughs> so it happens, though. It happens, you know? People pee in pools. Um, when you analyze that 16 ounces of stuff that we exude every 45 minutes, I'd say probably three-fourths of that's going to be urine. That's going to account for the majority of the volume of that. Um, urine is ammonia, much like sweat. Big, big, big contributor to chlorine demand. It's going to sap up chlorine, which is expensive. So again, chlorine is not very good at burning this out, especially in low levels. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Enzymes will break that pee right down. It takes the pee out of the pool. All right. Also, gross stuff we found in our sample, mucus, spit, we found saliva, um, some dead skin, ooh, uh, blood, and scabs, um, and then there was a little bit, and we're all adults here, so don't giggle, there was a little bit of the atomic bomb of all organic contaminations, there was a little bit of that, the dreaded AFR, it wasn't a full-blown one, but... AFR, for those that don't know, is the polite way of saying somebody pooped in the pool. It's an accidental fecal release. So, believe it or not, that is an organic contaminant. And just know that enzymes will break that stuff down as well. Let's just move on from that. It happens. What are you going to do? Um, let me show you an example. This is a real-life example of how bad organic contamination can be. All right? How severe it can be. This is a pool in... Hey, Jane, would you get the white one? Just real quick. Oh, nice. I feel like I'm in a movie theater. This is a pool in Golden, Colorado, right outside of Denver. Um, and I happened to be out there, and I got this call as a holodome. And their big claim to fame, this place, their moneymaker, was renting out their indoor pool that had like a little play area, that had a slide. But they would rent it out, and they would have kids' birthday parties there. Problem is, they didn't maintain this pool very well. And what they do is, it's only about 40, 50,000 gallons, they just dump it every time it got bad, which is about every four to six weeks it would get bad, as they say. Well, they were under a pretty severe drought, and they were under water restrictions, so they couldn't drain this pool, and it went bad on them, so they didn't know what to do. This is what it looked like. This is just about 400 kids being in and out of there for, for six to seven hours a day. Just, just totally, you know what's going on in there. We just went over it all. Nasty stuff. It was so bad, there was so much organic contamination in this pool that I had to take a picture of this because the pump itself was actually like acting like a blender to where it was like whipping this organic mass up like a, like a smoothie. It was just disgusting. So what I did is I added about three, a triple dose of Pool Perfect enzymes. Remember, it's got over 3,000 different types of enzymes in that bottle. And you can see it's starting to work here, because remember, enzymes grab a hold of something and they break it down to water and air. So we see this air being released. The carbon dioxide is coming out and it's starting to bubble. All right. We also have a surfactant in our enzymes, which makes it even more effective, because a lot of this stuff we're talking about, and you can see it here, it's a big slick. And it's starting to clump together right there and kind of break apart. So which is this big slick over the whole surface kind of comes together because we have this surfactant in the, in the uh, blend. And so which was once a slick is now this clump of stuff that's bobbing up and down in the water. And that way the enzymes can attack it from all different sides rather than just from the bottom. So literally about 48 hours later we were able to break down all of that stuff and save this pool, which was a good thing for them because they did not know what to do. Um, so it just shows you that, that even though this stuff is all natural and it's, kinda, it's a green product, it's still extremely effective. And when used properly, it does so much of the work for you. you know, Because this is what it's going to uh, uh, allow you to avoid. These are symptoms of organic loading or symptoms of all this nasty stuff being introduced in the pools. 